Talking, talking with famous people. Hello, I'm Eric, the host of Talking with Famous People, and tonight is part three of my conversation with my wife, Candace Strauss, about difficult subject matter. Talking, talking with famous people. I think it boils down to you want a Mexican husband. I don't think that's fair, actually. I don't think that's accurate. Well, what I mean by that is... You, you're saying, I, I mm-hmm. want a husband with, like, that, yes ma'am, no ma'am, <laughs> I'll sit here as long as... That's no, I don't think that's, I, I don't think that's the stereotype. I don't think that's the stereotype of a Mexican husband, first of all. Um, but I, I didn't mean that. What I mean is, I saw you at that <laughs> wedding, and your friends, men... Right. Which, they're not all Mexican. Chris, Chris is not Mexican. Chris Garcia? He's, I think, half Mexican. <laughs> um, okay, well, uh, what about the other two? Mexican. Right. And I think... But who cares about who... Cares about who well, I really feel you came out of that wedding saying, I want a man like Dan or blah or blah. I, like, don't, I didn't come out thinking that at all. I kept thinking... In fact, I don't think that... Uh, no, I think you're misunderstanding. I don't know I don't know what my next mate looks like. I can't even think about that right now. What I know is that this current state is not working for me. <sighs> okay. I don't want social I know. outings I know. to be so stressful for me. It shouldn't be, or like, even like when we had to wait too long for like the stupid machine broke in the photo booth or whatever, you should see the, like, you should use those pictures for this thingy. You look absolutely miserable. And I had to beg you to like not leave the room when you were trying to slip out, you know, and then somebody saw me begging you um, in line and they were like talking about it and I don't even know these people, so I don't really care. But I just felt like, oh, I'm always feeling so like embarrassed, you know? Well, I mean, it was at the end of... of I get it. But see, I get that that's where your limitations are. And then I tell you at the end, hey, Chris and and, and, um, Monique going to walk out with us, you know, and then they were just waiting for the speech to be done to to exit, right? And you were just like, I'm done, you know? And then, like, Monique's looking at me like, what are you doing, you know? And then I'm, like, feeling quite embarrassed, you know? And because they wanted to walk out with us, which I thought, okay, that was like really kind because we're leaving early and they're going to leave early too, you know. <clears throat> it just felt like I, 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 in that moment, I was just like, I am so done with that. I am so done feeling embarrassed. And, and I, it's not, I'm not blaming you, you know. I'm just, f- just tired of feeling that way. <sighs> Look, I mean, I'm sorry I I got too short at the end. I, you got it. But here's the thing. I mean, I feel awful. I sound awful in that story. But the other thing I think that's relevant is I, I spent, you know, seven hours or so gritting my teeth and... and being nice and not being rude to anybody and not making any mistakes, right? Did I, did I do anything in my I don't think it's or? need, I don't need to go into that. I don't think it's, it's, it's helpful, you know, at this point. Yeah, okay, well, well, you went into the part where I did tell you wrong in great detail. Why don't you go into the part where I, I but you know what I, I saw? tried my best. Yeah, you know, and that's, that's what, that actually helped me come to this realization. I think the wedding helped us a lot. Unfortunately. <laughs> oh, this kind of help, huh? <laughs> well, I mean, at least gave us some clarity in some sense, you know? Um, a push in some direction, you know? Um, it gave me insight into, and it, it made it very clear to me that I know you came out of that thinking, I tried. I tried my darndest. I was conscientious of trying. And I came out of that thinking, I am so done with that bullshit. I am so done. Um, I, I even had thoughts of, I deserve better, you know, um, I deserve, um, to not feel that way 
Um, and of course, I'm in charge of my own feelings, but I don't, there are certain things that trigger me to feel that way. And I don't want that anymore. I am becoming quite the anxious person. I've discussed with this with you. And I don't like it because part of me is feeling so comfortable in my own skin. And then another part of me that's tightly twined with my husband, with you, is becoming very like, ah, no, you know. I got sidetracked and I mean, it, it gave me so much insight of I don't want to feel that way anymore. And I, that was torturous. You should see one of like the strip of all of us in one photo. You were in the same pose, except one time you took off your sunglasses and it looked like somebody freaking slit my list, wrist for me, you know? And, um, it... Like, I'm in, I, I don't, like, I'm supposed to be, everybody is wanting me to scan all those and send them to me and uh, send them out, you know? And I'm like, oh, nice, because, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's just the writings on the wall, you know? Uh, it made me realize that you're tortured by what I want, and that's not fair for you. <sighs> you know? But, I mean, here's the thing, Candace. Let me just make sure you're not, you're, we're clear on this. Are you sure that because there are there are a lot of ways in which you and I can really enjoy each other's company and, and have good, wait, let me just finish that if we were to regularly record these things as often as possible and I were to participate in those things where we do get along really well I go with you vintage shopping sometimes I go to the boutiques with you sometimes I do enjoy going to your parents house when I have time I'm not opposed to that I don't think you've prioritized all right, maybe I can prioritize it more. But don't, don't you think that, that those things would be adequate and that you could excuse me from group trips to Mexico and weddings? <laughs> um, no. Because um, that's how we've been. Is in our bubble, when we're not fighting, it's really, really good. You but know? What, we did, what we haven't had is a, the ability to communicate, really. Right, but... There are some things that I'm over that are just inherently who you are. Like, I don't I don't know how to say <sighs> That's that. That's true. Uh, that's true. I mean, the thing is... I don't want to have a freaking fight about sunglasses, you know? I don't I don't want that anymore. You want to be able to tell your husband to take out his sunglasses and he takes out the sunglasses. Yeah. Because really there's no harm in that either way, right? And you're saying, leave me alone. But I'm saying, like... Any so anybody about social any awareness about that will say you know it's kind of rude. You need to make eye contact with people when you're talking to them. And so, but I understand you don't f prioritize that, and I totally prioritize that. <sighs> so, we're getting divorced. We are. And I earlier you said. To mean that you thought you would be more alone than I would at the end of this divorce. Why did yeah, you say that? Because it doesn't change the fact that I have told you I have put my whole soul, my whole life and being into being married, being a mom, and having a family. And I get to, and I, I have prided myself on like having a cool house and decorating and shopping for clothes for you and shopping for D and <clears throat> I haven't cooked in a long time but like cooking and cooking together and um, having our pets around gardening and if you think about that like I said hindsight 2020 we haven't been doing a lot of that you know why because I'm sure it was in preparation of what's to come and so, I am going to, I don't want to live back at home because I enjoy, I was thinking about it, like I enjoy waking up in my bed and hearing like the birds chirping. I enjoy, um, you know, you know I love sleeping on the couch. It's so strange, but I love it. And I love like waking up and looking out the, uh, uh seeing the tree outside and... You're smelling the, the Temple City air. Well, we have to. And I love, you know... We have to figure out a way for you to get whatever you need to get. Then. No, you listen... You have to have your own place. And, no, listen know. to me. No, listen. And I am going to have to 
because I'm gonna have like one bedroom I'm grateful for or whatever at my parents' house. No, that's um, what I'm saying. No. No, listen. And I know I'm not gonna be able to take a lot because one, I'm not gonna like Delilah loves our environment. The kid is you're taking whatever stuff if you want to take his no, fire no. water please. And and but I will leave without my husband, without my daughter, without our no, you pet. still have your daughter, your third mother. I know this. But I will leave with my car packed and that's it. And that's really sad to me. And you and of course I have an ama- and I I'm, I'm, I have an amazing support system and I will continue to have an amazing support system. but my my whole identity is was like I was so proud. I still am like proud to carry the Strauss name. I envisioned like I envisioned, growing old with you you know your father just talked to us or talked to you and us about your mom and i envisioned like i always envisioned like i'm gonna your parents are older all right stop pause pause we have to take a break hold on i get these little anxieties hold on and that concludes tonight's episode of talking with famous people stay tuned for part four of my conversation with Candace Strauss about difficult subject matter. Thanks for listening. Talking, talking with famous people.